This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay, good morning, Rabbi. So we're learning Sefer Zechariah. We're in the last parak, parak Yadalid. We are in Pasuk Gimel. And last week we learned the astounding revelation of the Abarbanel that he identifies Goy Gumagoy as none other than Ishmael. We are at the end of days. Esau Edom will have in their mind to free Jerusalem, liberate Jerusalem from the hands of the infidels, and they will ultimately try to conquer Yerushalayim from the Arabs, and that is what is called Melchemes Goy Gumagoy. We are, according to Habar Benel, Yishmael will in fact destroy Edom and take revenge against Edom for all of the atrocities that they committed to the Jewish people, and ultimately the Rebbein Shalom will also destroy Yishmael. They tried that once again, it was called the Crusades. Yeah, they tried that before, and this, according to Habar Benel, is the third occasion. In other words, the, uh, we learned last week that Habar Benel learns, based on the Yalkut Shemoni, that there were three instances that Yishmael waged war on Yishalayim. Um... One is when Edom with Rome came into Eretz Yisrael, times of Titus, the Yishmaelim tried to conquer them. The second time is after the Crusades came, again Yishmael took it back after 85 years. And according to the Abarmanel, the third occasion will be the Achras Hayamim. So now we're going to, uh, we're learning some of the details of what will happen on, in these amazing days. Pasukim of Yatsa Hashem, God will go out. He will wage war against those nations. Like the day he waged war on the day of battle. <clears throat> well, the uh, Malbim points out there's a difference between Yom Kirov and Melchama. There's a difference between Kirov and Melchama. What's the difference? Kirov is war in close proximity while Melchama is also from afar for either through um, arrows or stones and, and so forth so says the Navi, the Rebbe Shalom will not fight against our enemies in a Melchama, Melchama implies from a distance but rather Biyam Karav Biyam Karav means he'll wage war against them right up close the Amdu Ragla Bayam Ahu Al Har Hazesim ah one of the most well-known prophecies. V'yamdu ragla v'yemahu al har hazesim His legs, his feet will stand on that day on the mountain of Olives. Asher al pnei Yerushalayim ikedem which is eastward of Jerusalem. Now we have to understand what that means. What does it mean God's legs will stand on har hazesim? He doesn't have legs. V'nivka har hazesim Har hazesim will split. Mechetzioi Mizracha Vayama. From the halfway point, east to west. So, in other words, Yushalayim is here, Harhazesim is eastward. Is eastward. It will split east to west. From this way to that way. Which means that from the north, Half of Harazesim will be on the north and half of Harazesim will be on the south. Gei Gedol a great valley. Umash Chatsi Ahar half of the mountain will move to the north. Vechetsi Yoy Negva, half will move to the south. Says Rashi, Mechetsi Yoy Meyem Tzeiser, from the midway point. Mizrach Havayama, Mena Mizrach Lamarav, from east to west, Kamay Shemesayim Vahoylech. Umash Chatsi Ahar Tzafayna, the northern half will move from its place. The Yimshoich Litzad Safin will be drawn to the north. The Chain Matsinu Chetsioi Negva Litzad Daraim. Likewise, we find the southern part to the south. The Yia Hagei Beinayim. There will be a valley between them. Roishoi Lamizrach. The head will be toward the east. The Soifer Lamarav. And the end will be toward the west. So what does this mean? Sounds like an Definitely sounds like an earthquake. In other words, it will split on the halfway point from east to west. The northern half will go to the north, according to Rashi. 
and the southern part will go to the south. The Mari Kara seems to say, let's see the Mari Kara. Har Hazesim Hoya Har Gavoya. Har Hazesim was a very high mountain, but I made Samach Lushalayim that stood near Yushalayim Lemizracha to the east. The Yushalayim Yosheves Be'emek. Yushalayim is situated in a valley. Ba'kalish Baruch Mevakea Har Hazesim. Hashem will split open Har Hazesim. Umoyshe Chetzioy Lemizrach Vechetzioy Lemarav. He'll move half of it to the east and half of it to the west. That's not like Rashi. Kedei she'i Hashem Emek Gadol so that there should be a big valley because as we're going to see there's a prophecy that water will emanate from Yishalayim she'ke she'yatsu ma'im chayim Yishalayim when water emanates from Yishalayim she'yavru It will go through that valley. So you'll ask, So you'll ask, But the half of the mountain in the east will interrupt. Even if it reaches the half of the mountain in the west, In other words, if this is Yushalayim and Har Hazesim is eastward, really the half in the west would interrupt before the half in the east. But then look what he says: Umash Chatsi Har Tzavan and Chatsi Negba, Chatsi Har Shabe Mizrach, Yamosh Lamshach Litzafain, Mechay Chatsi Har Acher Shemav Yimshel Klavei Daraim, Biyakuloi Emek. According to the Mari Kara, first ye, they split, they split, and then they go like this. They split the shear. So that the they split, so they have a mountain, they split, and then they. <clears throat> that's what he seems to say. What is the meaning of this Nivua? Take a look at the Abarbanel. <clears throat> this should be on. Page Reish Mem Dalet. Do you have the sheets, Reish Mem Dalet? <coughs> There's some more sheets over here, but my knees. Where in Reish Mem Dalet? On uh, the first column, where there's a Dalet. About halfway down on the, fir- on the right-hand column, there's a Dalet. Do you see the Dalet? Yeah. By the Dalet over there, Ho'inyu nasheni, v'omroi, v'omdo, ragla v'ayem ahu halar zesem. The legs will stand on Harazesim Ratzalam Rashalafi, Shayikane Hashem Lushalai Mir Kadsha Latsia and Kinagadal because God will take up the vengeance of Yushalaim and Siyain. Lachin Yia Khizek Mahamahivi Kara Pani Sham, that's why the the main part of the battle will be near Jerusalem. Kihara Zaisim Apne Yushalaim. Okay. The Samachilav, let's sat ham isoch, it's right near there by the east. For, ah. What does it mean God's feet? What does it mean God will stand on Har Hazesim? Viraglov, the feet, Perush Harav HaMoira. The Rambam in the Mar Nebuchim explains, Shehem Siboisav, God's causes. What does that mean? It doesn't literally mean God will stand. It means God's causes. Meaning, whenever, wherever a person is, what brought them there? What was the immediate cause of where they are? Their feet. So when you see that, when, when the Navi says God's feet will be on Har Hazesim, what it means is, whatever is transpiring is, is rooted in the will of God. That's what it means, God's feet. If you look in the Targum Yonasan, it says, on the Pasuk, the Yizgalei Begvorte. God will reveal Himself in His strength. So it doesn't literally mean His feet. It means He will be revealed in His, in his strength. Okay, let's for a moment take a look at the Radak. Then we're going to come back to the Abarbanel because the, the Abarbanel quotes the Radak. <coughs> Uh, 
Uh, the Radak says, Pasuk Tad, Al Derech Moshal, Sheyira Oisum Moifes Varaz Oisum Sheyibaka. Great wonders will be seen on Har Zaysim. Well, Perush, HaChacham HaGadah Rabbeinu Moshe, the Rahi quotes the Ramam that we just quoted, that Raglov does not mean his feet, but rather Sibasa, his cause. Like the Pasuk, Vayivarech Oyscha L'Ragli. Right? The Pasuk says, Vayivarech Oyscha L'Ragli. He blessed you L'Ragli, not because of my feet. L'Ragli means because of me. B'Sibasi. Kain Raglov, Ratzalem, Rakiim Sibaisav. Now, the Radak says on Pasuke that the splitting of the mountains will sound like an earthquake. Right, so back to the Abar Benel, about ten lines from the bottom. Baharadak calls up Sheima Rash Sheia Oz Yibaka Harahu Lekan Olekan Bishar Hagebe Neim. So the Abar Benel points out that the Radak understands this Kipshutai. Um, he says. However, this is some type of miraculous event. <coughs> so then the Abar Benel says six lines from the bottom. This is what I want to focus on. You see that? Six lines from the bottom, on the right hand column, page Reish Mem Dalet. Shahadibur Hazak Kulaihu. Hamshili. This is all a masha. The hanimsha. By Shatia Hamochama. What is this battle? It's the battle of the two mountains. Who are the two mountains? Shia Mochama bin Harazim, Shiul Tsar Echad, Bene Edoim, Ulitsar Acher, Bene Yeshual, Haloichmim, Elu Alelu. The two sides of the mountains are the two enemies. Who are the two enemies? Esav and Yishmael. Vial his chal kasam ma'aracha mo ma'aracha, and how they are divided, one camp opposite the other. Amar sheyibaka harazesim. It is described as the split of harazesim. Kolomer sheyu mitzad echad mimenu hanoitzrim. On one side will be the noitzrim. Who are the noitzrim? Christians. Umitzad oachar hayishmeilim. So says the Abarbanel Kfar Yadata. You already know sheyu shalayim harim savivla. Right, David Amalek says in, Yush- in Tehillim, Yerushalayim Harim Savivla. Yerushalayim is also a mashal. When you look at the city of Yerushalayim, it's a big limud. What's the limud? David Amalek says, Yerushalayim Savivla. Yerushalayim is surrounded by mountains. And just like Yerushalayim is surrounded by mountains, Vashem Savivli Amoy Meyatavi So too God encircles his people. In other words, when you look at Yerushalayim, you should be comforted. This is a mashal of what Hashem does for Klal Yisrael. The same way He surrounds Yushalayim by mountains, He, he protects Klal Yisrael. Yushalayim harim savivla, vashem saviv liyamay. <clears throat> so, v'yayis ha-machama begay, since the war will be in the valley, yiyu kad ho'ivim mikatsa har mitzad echad, you'll have some enemies on one side of the mountain, v'akad ho'acheres ha-menageh, you have the other guys on the other side. This is the intention of Harazesim. So as says Abarbanel, why am I saying that's what it means? Maybe it means the mountain will split. I mean, that's what it says. Why shouldn't we read the Pasuk at face value? Why should we say the Pasuk is a mashal to the Noitzrim and the Ishmaelim? Well, it says the Abar Benel, this is what is meant here, Imhar Azesim. The Shimush Chatsi Ahar, Loi Shitzur, Loi Shatzur Yatik Mimakam. It doesn't mean those stones will move. Ki lo Yasa Hashem Lakim Nez Golok Hazem Abli Achreach. Because otherwise, why in the world would God make this miracle? God is not in the business of splitting mountains. That's not what He does for a living. God is not in the mountain splitting um, business. Why in the world would Yisrael make such a nest? Elamai, it's not literal. It means it's a reference to the big war between Edom and Yishmael. 
Im haya kfi pshute aksuvim ela im naima sho umais. Ah, says that Bar Menashe. Tell you what it means. Certainly, it does mean literal. But God's not going to move the mountains. It's the nations of the world will excavate the middle of the mountains to allow them to wage war against their enemy. Wow. So we always thought that La'asalava, you know, this miraculous event will take place. There'll be a big earthquake and um, Haraz Esim will split. According to Abar no. It's a mashal to Esim versus Ishmael and Taka, they will, maybe they'll dynamite the inside of the mountains in order to have a better vantage point to fight. They will destroy the tops of the mountains, with their work, to make a highway. When nations go to war, they often have to clear paths and clear roads to travel. Okay. <clears throat> Says the Navi. Pasuke, Vinastem Gay Harai. And the valleys of my mountains will flee. Kiagia Gay Harim El Otsal. Because the valley of the mountains will go to Otsal. We'll have to see what Otsal means. Vinastem, and you will flee Kaasharnastem Ibn Harash. Like you fled from the earthquake, Bime Uziah Melech Yehuda. In the days of Uziah, the king of Yehuda, Uva Hashem Alekai, and Hashem God will come, Kal Kedoshim Imach, all of his holy ones with him. What does this mean? <clears throat> Who's Uziah? Uziah was a wicked king who was not a Kohen, and he decided one day to bring the Ketoyres in the Beis HaMikdash. Well, that was not the right thing to do. And because of that, God had decided to uh, remove his Shekhinah from the Beis HaMikdash. And there was a tremendous earthquake and people fled. So just like in the days of Uziah, when there was an earthquake, people fled. So too, in, this, in these end of days, people will flee from the earthquake. Rav Mendel Hirsch, the son of Rav Shamshin Rafael Hirsch, explains the analogy and the reference to the earthquake in the time of Uziah, the king of Yehuda. In the times of Uziah, king of Yehuda, when there was an earthquake, the earthquake signified God's departure from the Mikdash. This prophecy is speaking about an earthquake which will signify God's return to the Mikdash. God left with an earthquake and He returns with an earthquake. <clears throat> Let's see Rashi. The Nasdem Gehara, Yoinosan Tergem. Tagamianus and translate Visatatim gay. The valley will flee. In other words, we translate it, we fled, right? And you will flee. We translate it, we will you will flee to the valley. Look at the Radak. Kishayibaka Hahar, when the mountain splits, Yanusu Ibn Kalarash, you will flee because of the sound of the earthquake. Vyanusu El Geharai. And you will flee to the valley. Kiagia Geharim El Atsal. The valley will reach Atsal. Kihage Shayasabika, the valley that will be in the in the plains. Hahi Yarik will be long Vyagi El Atsal. We'll reach Atzal. What's Atzal? Says Radak Vushem Makayim. It's the name of a place. Kolaymar, out of the mountain, mountainous region, there will be a crack until Atzal, and they will run there because they f- figure they'll be able to be saved outside of the mountains, and they'll find a valley there. <clears throat> so, according to the Radak, they will flee to the valley. According to Rashi, Rashi says, Yoinasan Tergem vi satatim gay harai. The valley will flee. The fish of Shalayim harim savavla. You Shalayim is surrounded by mountains. The yesh gay bein har shabat safan bein har azesim. There's a mount, there is a valley between the mountain in the north and har azesim. So to in the south. 
And when half of Haraz Asim reaches the mountain in the north, the valley between them will be sealed up. In other words, according to Rashi, Haraz Asim is in the east. And there's some kind of valley between Harhazesim and a mountain that's in the north. And this earthquake will somehow fuse the two mountains together. <coughs> Rashi translates the word Atsal as the peak of the mountain. El Atsal El Goiva Rashi Haram to the height of the tops of the mountain. Now, on the day that we mentioned Uziel is Makhtar Ketoras, he became a Mitzayra. Rashi makes reference to that. The foundations will shake, like on the day that Uziel got Saras. Now, who are all these Kedoshim? Called Kedoshim Imach. It says all the Kedoshim will be with him. What's Kedoshim? The Malachim. The Hoya Bayoimahu and Obia on that day. Lo or yikara is There will not be light that is bright and that is dull. On that day, there will not be bright light and it will not be dull light. People is dull light. Yes, like congealed, dark. Let's see Rashi. So what does it mean on that day there won't be bright light and there won't be there won't be dull light? Yoinas on Tergame, Lo Yia Nehoira Elokin Adi Uglid. There will not be light bright and congealed. Yihi Nehoira. There will be light. Lo Yia or Noiga will not be bright. Ki Yikarzvan Yia Yikaris Lashen Kikar Karim. If you look in the Mitsuda Siyon, he says Yukaros means clear light, or Bahir. But Kipayan is Choshech, something congealed. Like, so there won't be bright or dull light. What is the significance of that? <coughs> that there won't be bright or dull light. Let's continue. We'll, we'll maybe get a clearer picture. It will be one day. In other words, it will be a unique day, a special day. Where the Mitsuda Stava says this will last for one day. When will it be? God knows when it will be. It will be a day that's lo yoim v'loy laila. What does that mean? We won't. It won't be day or night. But the Haya Yoyim Echad will be a unique day. Yivada Hashem that is known by God. God will know what it is. Lo Yoyim. It won't be day. V'lo Yilayla. It won't be night. The Haya Le'Eis Erev, and it will be toward evening. Yiyar. There will be light. Now, usually, when it comes to toward evening, the, the light doesn't come out toward evening. But here it says. That the light will come, Laes Erev. The light will be Laes Erev. <clears throat> well, let's see what this means. Let's see Rashi. Behaya Yoim Echad. Behaya Hadavar Hazer Yoim Echad Mi Yoim Oshel Akadosh Baruch. This matter will be one day from the days of God. Hu Hayoim Yadua. That is the well-known day. Shehu Lahachanas Yisho Oshel Akadosh Baruch. That is for that was prepared for the salvation of God. Loyoyim v'loy laila, not day and not night. What does that mean, not day and not night? Loy or noiga, not a light which shines, but or shal olam haba, with the light of the world to come, shenemar, but or achama, like the Novi Yishaya says, the light of the sun, yia shivasayim ka'ar ha-levana, will be seven times greater than the moon. So it won't be like the light of olam haba, v'loy laila, 
V'loy eis sorrow will not be a time of distress. Ketzaras shibud galio shemikaydem. Sheyimei meshichinu yu. These are the days of Mashiach. Ve'en b'hem shibud. There's no subjugation. So according to Rashi, what it means that it won't be day and it won't be night. It won't be day. It won't be like Olam Haba. But it won't be night means it will not be like days of Tzara. So according to Rashi, we're identifying these days as the days of Mashiach. What is Mashiach? Mashiach is not Olam Haba. It's Lo Yoim. It's not some kind of pre... So supernal existence. It's not a supernatural existence. It's not Yoim. It's not Olam Haba. On the other hand, it's not Laila. It's not a time of Tzara. But at the end, of, but by the time of evening, then the light will come. In other words, towards the end of Mashiach, then it will already somehow metamorphosize into Olam Haba. Says Rashi, shana. Before the thousand years are up, Yia or Hanoiga, that's when this supernatural light will be Bakala Toifa Amra Yisrael. So according to Rashi, the Mashiach will come within a thousand years of the Gallas. Well, when were the Crusades? The year Tatnu. 1096, right? Well, <clears throat> the Barbanel rejects this comment of Rashi. Even though, if you take a look on the sheet, the Barbanel accords great respect to Rashi more than any of the other Mepharshim. Let's see if we can find it. Um, he says, Zion, correct. So we'll take a look. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen lines on the bottom. Ah, okay. Because of Rashi, Vahayaliyes Erev, this is on page Rashi Memhe, right hand column, about 14 lines from the bottom. Because of Rashi, Vahayaliyes Erev, Yia Ar Koydem Sheyigmur Elav Shana. Before a thousand years, Yia Hanoigah Bechola Tov HaAmar Al Yisrael will be the time of all the utopian existence that is promised. The Hidden Im Farish Achazam Mahim Elav Shanam Halalo Shuzach Arav. We're going to explain what are these thousand years where he got it from. Rashi knew all precious knowledge. In other words, the Barba is according to Rashi, great respect here that we need to understand what Rashi means because Rashi knew everything. And he says right before Ches, like ten lines before Ches, or like fourteen lines from the top in the next column, Venir Alisha Mikan Lokach Rashi. It appears to me this is where Rashi got it from. Koidim Shayigmar Elaf Shana that it will happen before a thousand years. Because Rashi thought that when it says by Yoimahu, that's referring to Yoimah Shal Kalash Brachu, the day of God, Shu Elav Shana. Says Rabbi Nel, aside from Rashi's great wisdom, Ushlemus Tayrasa, in the perfection of his Torah, Shalohaya Das Hashalimahu Kach. He didn't really mean that. Why? He didn't really mean that. Why? He didn't really mean that. Why? The tough, tough kuf mem shana, because already one thousand nine hundred forty years have already passed. Now, what do you mean already passed? They didn't, not really. <clears throat> In other words, 
you think that Abarbanel lived at the end of the 15th century, beginning of the 16th century. How many years uh, earlier had Churban Bayez Sheni been? Churban Bayez Sheni was in what year? 70. Approximately, so. It's 1400 years before, so what does he mean? It's already been 1900 years. I guess from the time of Churban Bayez Rishon. So, he uh, does not agree that to this idea that the Galos will have to will exist for less than a thousand years uh, and uh, he understands that Rashi does not quite mean that ok let's do one more Pasuk spring water will emanate from Yishalayim half to the eastern sea the Yardin and half to the western sea the Mediterranean Bakayat will be in the summer, even in the hot season, there will be spring water with Achoreth, and even in the winter, when usually the water freezes up, yeah, that's what will be. The Haya Hashem Lamelech Kol Aretz, and God will be the king of the world. Ba'yoyimahu on that day, Yihiyah Hashem Echad, Hashem will be one, Ushma Echad, His name will be one. <clears throat> and of course, Rashi in Chumash says, that based on this Pasuk, we understand the Pasuk Shema Yisrael Hashem Lekeinu Hashem Echad That right now Shema Yisrael Listen Kali Yisrael Hashem Lekeinu Hashem is our God But He's not the God of the Umay Yisraelam But on that day Hashem will be one And His name will be one All the nations in the world will recognize Hashem So Hashem Lekeinu Hashem who is now our God Hashem Echad Hashem will be one When? In the future That's the meaning of Shema according to Rashi say? Have a wonderful day You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.